Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on Windows Phone 8 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn mobile app development. This is part 5 in the series entitled SAML and Code Behind for Windows Phone 8 App Development. SAML stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. It is based on Extensible Markup Language or XML. In Windows Phone 8, it is used to design and create a user interface. What you can do in SAML can also be done through code behind. Its extension name is .saml. We already explained SAML a little in the third part of this tutorial, but we will discuss its structure a little further. For our first activity, we will create a Windows Phone 8 app, name it app 5 underscore 1, and place it in CWP8. We will create two text blocks, one using SAML and another using code behind. Let's create a new project. Visual Z Sharp Windows Phone, Windows Phone app, and the name is app 5 underscore 1. The location is WP8. We can click OK. OK. Before we continue, let's turn on the line numbers both for SAML and Z Sharp. Click Tools, Options, Text Editor. Look for Z Sharp. Check the line number. And also for SAML, check the line number. Okay. Now let's try to resize our window so that we'll have a better or a bigger area for our SAML editor pane. The first line defines what type of Windows application we are creating. Of course, it's a phone application. The X class it states the common language runtime namespace. A namespace is an organizational method to prevent name conflicts in code. The X class namespace provides a connection for a code behind for a SAML page. The name along this line is app 5 underscore one dot main page. In the Solution Explorer, expand the main page dot SAML and you will see this main page dot SAML dot CS. This is the code behind file. It has an extension of CS because we are using C sharp. Double click it and you will see the file with namespace app 5 underscore one and a partial class of main page. Click again main page that SAML and you will see here an attribute that starts with XMLNS which means XML namespaces. They seem to refer to URLs or uniform resource locators but they are not. Instead they are URIs or uniform resource identifiers. The first URI is the Core Window Presentation Foundation namespace that includes all WPF classes including the controls for our UI such as buttons, text blocks, and others. The second URI includes several SAML utility features. Notice that it is mapped to the prefix X. Take note that X, phone, and the others are namespaces. To conclude this explanation, just remember that this part of SAML contains the rules that our app must follow. Let's continue our activity by creating our two text blocks using SAML and code behind. Go to the content panel grid, type text block there. We'll put the text using SAML and We'll make the horizontal alignment equal to the left. We'll close it with slash greater than. Notice that our text block can now be seen in our visual designer. Let's create our second text block using code behind. Click main page at saml.cs and under initialize component, let's create an object for text block. Let's name it tbk1 is equal to new text block. We'll set the text property of tbk1 to using code behind semicolon. Let's change also the horizontal alignment. Our first has left so we'll change it to uh, right, we'll make it right. I mean, windows that horizontal alignment that right. Look how long this value is. And finally, we're going to add it in our content panel. 
if you remember that's the grid so to add it use the method add and it's our object tbk1 semicolon okay now let's go back to main page that Samuel you notice that there's only one text block uh, in our visual designer let's click the emulator okay so now you can see our two text blocks one was created using Samuel and the other using code behind let's stop it now going to the visual designer we cannot still see uh, the text block that we did using code behind all that we can see here is uh, the text block that was used or that was created using SAML. As early as this time, we can say that the advantages of using SAML includes that it is shorter, that there is this implicit type conversion. Notice how easy horizontal alignment property was written in SAML as compared to that of the code behind. This is due to implicit conversion that type converters silently do in SAML. A third advantage is that the design can be readily seen in Visual Designer. The last one is that the designer code is separated from logic code. This will clearly distinguish the roles of a designer and a developer. Let's do the second activity to show this. We will create a Windows Phone 8 app and name it app 5 underscore 2 and place it in CWP8. Using SAML, we will create a text block, a text box, and a button. We will let the user enter only numbers in the text box, and when the button is clicked, we will display its triple value in the text block. So let's create a new project, file new project. We'll name our app, app 5 underscore 2. Click OK. Click OK. Let's first change our title and page name. For our title, let's make it app 5 underscore 2. And then for our page, let's make it main page. Let's create our text block inside the grid. So it's text block. And we'll name it. Remember the X prefix. We'll name it tbk1. And we'll close it to slash greater than. Next is our text box there text box let's name it um, text box tbx1 now we'll set the height to 100 uh, it mentioned that it should only enter numbers so we need this input scope property equal to only number then let's close it slash greater than and the last one, we need the button. Let's name our button BTN1. Let's change the height to 100 also. And the vertical alignment to bottom. And maybe we can also change the content. Let's put triple and close it slash greater than okay so now our user interface is done it's time to create an event for our button so selecting the button let's go to the properties let's click event handlers then double click the click event so this method button one click was automatically provided to us before we write the code Let's go back to main page that Samuel and see what happened to our button. There is our button. As you can see, a property click was added and its name is button one click. The same name for our method in main page that Samuel.cs. So when the button is click, we're supposed to multiply whatever is inside text box one and the result will be placed in text block 1 so that's tbk1 and we're going to use its text property to hold that value so what we need to compute is whatever is inside 
text box one dot text. But because we need computation, uh, this property or this value must be converted to a number. To do that, we have one of the ways is to use the class convert and its method to any number. Let's say double there, the to double. So this converts this string to double. Now we can multiply it to 3 to get its triple value. Still there's an error because although we were able to compute its triple value, this is a number and we're trying to put it in a text. So to change it back to string or text, we need to put a parenthesis, press dot, and there's a method called to string. Parenthesis, a semicolon, class. Now let's try to run it in our emulator. There is our app. Let's click the text box. Let's put 12. Click the button. There is the result. Let's try to change it. Put another value. 78. Click the button. 234. So congratulations, we just finished implementing a little of SAML and code behind. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Maas